close friends who stick closer than ever. As we continue to this ideal of not just looking, now we're trying to build a relationship with each other. Lord, that we would, would take it to heart and be those people that you call us to be. I ask that you bless everyone here. Holy Spirit, I ask that you touch heart and change life. Move and power, move and sign with anyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead and take your chairs. <coughs> Friendships take time to build. Take a while, in fact. I almost wanted to play that song by War. Why, remember that song you guys know that one? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Right? The color of your skin don't matter to me. As long as we can live in harmony. Amen. See, we say all the time, and we emphasize it, try to emphasize it, but time and time again, that Victor Outreach is a family. And, and I can say that wholeheartedly that we are. When I get around other pastors that have been in ministry a while, and we have had, uh, as we grow in ministry, we had uh, debates, other pastors and I, uh, confrontation, but we're still here. And we look at each other, and we see each other, we say, yeah, what's happening? Because those things are not intended to break friendships. They're intended to build friendships. Uh, the, uh, the ability to, to grow and prosper. One good friend, Dr. Sammy Chan, talked about that when we did the video last night. Dr. Sammy Chan, top uh, teacher in leadership. So one's ability to grow is, is parallel to your pain threshold. And that is so true in all areas of our life. So there's those people who don't like to be rubbed the wrong way or, or, or are, they, they, they go through pain and they just want to isolate themselves. They have a very low pain threshold. So what happens, they never change. And they really truly never establish long lasting. People want to avoid pain. So we're going to talk about a hard wrenching emotional topic, I believe. And we're going to talk about building friendships, relationships rather. Because again, like I said last week, if we're going to be a people who we're not just going to look at what God is doing, but we're going to be, be the people that are doing what God is doing. But we're going to be God's hands, His feet. We're going to be His mouthpiece. So if we're going to do that, then you're going to run across people. Hello, somebody. And, and, and those are the people that God orchestrated in your life to help you grow. And I want to say again, and you have to have a certain pain threshold to build relationships. I might be getting ahead of myself, but I'll do it anyway. Because if you've been married more than two hours, you understand that you need a pain threshold. <laughs> Mary Cole, that, that was your time to say, Hallelujah! I mean, you have to have a certain pain threshold. <clears throat> People, marriages that don't have a pain threshold end up in divorce. Because all of them, they get this illusion that, well, it shouldn't be like this. He should treat me like this, and she should do this, and he should do that, and she should do that, and you're all lost. Because nobody should do anything. They're just learning, they're growing, and they're hitting your pain threshold. And then you learn and you grow as you go. He should, she should, that, that should be the last thing you do. Because it doesn't work that way. Hello. Of course you have to be careful who you choose to be your friend. You know, and, and I've shared many times and psychologists and sociologists have said that after 18 months of being around a person, you get to decide whether you really want this person to be your friend or not. It doesn't happen right away. But about, about, about that threshold, 18 months, two years, you're starting to think, I don't know about this one. Or, or she's a keeper, he's not a keeper, that's a duck, get away from that chick. 
right? After about 18 months, that's when you start to decide. And then, you know, sometimes you hope they borrow money and they don't pay you back because then they'll, then they'll avoid you. <laughs> right? And, and, and uh, some people say, yeah, that guy owes me 100 bucks and he never comes around. So I look at it this way, man, it only cost me 100 bucks to get rid of him? <laughs> but after that time, you get past it and then in about that, that four year period where you've known him for four years, you go, hey, you know what, I think we're, we're going to be friends. So you see, that, and that's, that's getting you going. Right? And then you move from there. So you got to be careful how you, how you get your friendship, how you form them. 1 Corinthians uh, 5.33, it's a very familiar, um, 15.33 rather, it's a very familiar portion of Scripture. It says, don't, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It's like those people who say, well, oh, my friend hang on the bar, so I just want, I'm trying to win them over. No, you're not. You're going to get high. Come on. That's like a drug addict saying, I want to go work for a pharmacy. <laughs> No, that's not the key. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself. Wherever you hang around with, that, you, know, as you know, we've all heard that from our parents, right? Tell me who you hang around with. Yeah. And I'll tell you who you are, right? We, we've heard that. We have all these things come cliche. Birds of a feather together. quack together. <laughs> Walk like a duck, talk like a duck, quack like a duck. Must be a duck. <laughs> right? Oh, and then, then on and on, what's the other one? Oh, I like this one. It takes one to know one. So don't be misled. That company corrupts. Right? Wherever you socialize will determine what type of person you're going to be. Right? Listen, if you're straight and you hang out at a gay bar, something's going to happen to you. I won't elaborate that one right there. Huh? Each place may have some good people. We're not denying that. But their lifestyle may not be what God intends. And if you're sticking in that location, something's going to happen to you. You're going to become like them. Right? It's just, it's just you can't fight it. it, it it's a, it's a, uh, almost like gravity. So if you want God, a God's ideal of a fulfilled life, then it stands the reason that you need to look for someone who's who their intent in life is to do God's will and purpose. If you, then you have to begin to search. And right there, just, just from that, you begin to sift through the multitude of companions that we all have. Because if you, if you just want to maintain a multitude of companions, the Bible is clear, it will bring you to ruin. But there is a friend that stays closer to the brother. But you have to let it sift itself. So you have two year to four year period of sifting of who is going to be the real friend that I really believe that's going to stick to me closer than a brother. We have an example when Jesus was there and Jesus was on fast story. He had three years to, to get people to, man, who do I get? So he knew, I have to get uh, uh, people that, that, are, that are together, that, 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 that are friends, that, that trust each other. He knew what he was picking. And it just so happened he chose three people James, John, and Peter. And, and the Bible calls them his inner circle. And they go, wow, oh, Jesus was heavy. He, he developed an inner circle. No, he didn't. He walked and he looked at people and he seen how they hung around. He goes, those three people worked together. They've been working with each other for years. They, they trust each other. Jesus didn't pick the inner circle. The inner circle picked itself. Jesus is just capitalized on what the people were doing. And in the same manner, when Jesus comes down to look it up, and he's looking for a team, somebody to do something great, maybe in another country, maybe in another state, he looks across Victor Outreach in Colorado Springs and says, who's hanging? Oh, these three know each other. They trust each other. Because when you get out the field and you want to start a ministry, you better trust each other. You better have each other's back. It's not easy out there. There's piranha out there. There's predators. We also call them church members. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the, the, he, he's seen these three people hanging together in the church. We're out in their business. He goes, I'm going to pick those three. Follow me. And so they became his inner circle. So Jesus trusted their ability to choose their friends. 
innovation. See, friends can make you feel happy. Hello. As in the case of Jesus in a circle, when, when you're with friends you trust, you can just be yourself. You know when you're just going to relax, just kick it, you ain't got food, nothing, you ain't got interest, you're with your friend. It's just a good feeling. So they can make you feel good. They, they develop you, they train you. Your friend, a good friend, can say, oh, well, bro, that, that, they shouldn't act like that. If, if you go around people that let you act the way you want to act and they just let you go, they're not your friend, they're not the companion that'll bring you to ruin. But your friend's going to say, man, stop acting like that. What's wrong with you, man? Right, right. Even when they're, if you're married and your friend's with you and they see how you treat your wife, they pull you aside and go, how can you treat your wife like that? That's a friend. That's a friend. Some people don't like that because you have a little pain threshold. You don't like being told anything. Hello, somebody. I told you I was going to get deep in the motion. Don't get mad at me. Huh? See, because the Bible says iron sharp iron, right? And so we want a sharp iron. And some of you, you know, may never uh, say anything important, and they're not friends, but you want those ones that'll take you to the carpet, they'll correct you, they'll rebuke you. They're no friends. Because they'll, 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 they'll push you to achieve. They'll, they'll, they'll encourage you to move on. Uh, th these are the ones that drive us on. If you don't get those types, then you're going to get the ones that just disillusion you. Like, man, I, put on, I, I trust in this one. You know, I, I shared my heart, man. Now they're putting it on Facebook. That's another thing, man. I can't. I, that drives me. I, I, I know. Are people that lacking in education? That's a, that's a nice way of saying stupid. But they put all their mess on Facebook. It's like, like, hello, the whole world is reading this. So you tell your best friend this, and then you know it's on Facebook, and now they have a Tumblr and, and Instagram. They put an Instagram with, with a picture of you with a big bubble hanging out. <laughs> and they're just like, wow. Because they can do you dirty. They can, right? And that's what people are afraid of. Because those side friends that you're looking for, they, they're the ones that can drag you down. Huh? They'll put you in the pit. Uh, rotten tea, they don't care. <laughs> They're your friend. 
All right? And there's something about being accepted for who you are. Because you, you, you know, sometimes you have to play the role, you go to work, you gotta play the role, you gotta, you know, you gotta be attacked a certain way. You're in school, you gotta be a certain way. And you, you know, and that, that's normal because we live in a, in a developed society where there's certain norms and moral ways that we gotta hold. But when you're with your friends, you just can be you. you. You're accepted. Right? They know your past. You know, because some of your past, you can't don't share it. Don't share it. <laughs> You know, because I even people, God, change me. I used to be and have a long live. Okay, that's good, but don't tell your boss that, because they might fire you. <laughs> They're not your friend. You should have a friend. You will find it. Amen? It's not that it's one of the, the best actions of Victor Irish. Because there's not much you can do to not be accepted here. You're pretty much welcome. Because, you know, if I put a list of the, the do's that people did in Big Irish, there'd be a lot of do-do's in the dicks. <laughs> They'd be doing a lot of things. Hello? Come on, man. You know, if I listed it, you know, a third of the robberies in Colorado Springs probably can be boiled down to some of the guys. <laughs> But when I look at it, that's how I look at it. When I see that, I think about it, I go, man, look at the miracles God has done. I'm looking at the world, I go, wow, look at God's power. Look at what God can do, man. He can take somebody with a law messed up, huh? Tear them down, they'll be torn down the road, but he can raise them up. Right? This is what we, we get the phrase, you can be even go from messed up to blessed up. Yeah. 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 They're accepted. So we of all churches know that God can change anybody. Let me say it again. God can change anybody. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he can. So we understand how, how, how a friend should be. We accept people. We see the best. My, you know, I go on, I'll drive around to a, a wino, alcoholic, or I think a girl out there. I go, oh man, in my head usher. Who? See that guy that went on? That's my head usher. I'm gonna get him. And people, other people go, what? Don't you want your head usher to come to Rock from the Rockmore area? No, they're too high maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get people are high maintenance. Yeah. Oh man, they can't even, they're just like, oh man. No, let, me, let me get off that trip. Get over here. I want to get over there. <laughs> but you know, you can get people that they're just like, oh, thank you, God. You're saying, what do you want to do? Yeah. Right? Another thing, when you have a, a good relationship, godly relationship, they, they were warned because you feel love. Love. In Proverbs uh, uh, 10, 12, it reads, hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs. So when we deal with an issue, it should never be done to expose people. Or to harm them. That's why I, I, I understand people trying to like front people off and embarrass them. Why do you want to do that? Now, if they've done something to your friend, you want to expose them. But you want to expose them personal. But no, no, not to harm them. You expose their fault. Because it is a fault, but it, it's not them. They don't fight against flesh and blood. It's a power of personality. So when you expose this, you take them aside and you expose this problem, you knucklehead. You can say it, it's your friend. Right? But you don't want to expose them. You know what the knucklehead did? That's not a friend. In my neighborhood, I was growing up, I was growing up in the neighborhood, in the ghetto. A guy who did that, that wasn't called a friend, that guy was called a punk. Well, that's another vernacular, so let me get back over here. Uh, again, we may expose them, but not, but not to the public, we expose them to themselves. Proverbs 79 says, he who covered over offense promotes love. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. The apostle Peter, when he wrote, he was, he was adamant about this principle. He, in his book, he tells, look, you guys gotta love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sin. Now don't confuse it with love less you sin. No, no. 
Love says, hey, come here. You're, 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 you're sinning, Lord. You've got to stop. You're covered. And the Bible says you've got to bring the blood of Jesus into the conversation to cover that sin. Huh? That's what we do. Because those type of godly relations help you with your inner change. You know, because you have to change. If, if you don't think you have to change, then, then, then I guess you're God and Jesus came back already. But short of that, we all have to change. You know, a natural response to friendship is to begin to change inside. Because you'll find out real, real quickly, when you're around somebody, there are things that you do that rub them the wrong way. Or rub them the wrong way. You'll, you'll figure it out, right? And you're going to say, man, if I want to keep this relationship, Because you're going to change, and, and, and in like manner, the other person will say, well, I got to keep this relationship. Change can't be just one sided, ladies. My, uh, my husband were better. No, wait a minute. You work on being business right, and let, let your God and help your husband work it out themselves. <laughs> and vice versa. Okay? Because, you, know, you know, women are so smart, they, they know everything that the husband needs. Apparently. Well, I mean, with women, who need the Holy Ghost to? <laughs> but we should all want to change. Everybody's more responsible for their own change. Women, you change. Men, you change. Right? And because marriages won't put you through changes. I shared a story here. It's about Billy Graham's wife. Her name was Ruth. She was asked one time, I think it was Larry King who asked her, uh, during a, uh, he goes, during a long married life together, have you ever thought about a divorce? He asked, well, that's what a great question to ask. Ruth Graham, have you ever thought about a divorce? They've been married for six weeks, years. She replied, no, never divorce. Homicide, me, but never divorce. <laughs> See, but over time, you learn you just got to change. You have an argument, you argue, let the argument rest there. You have an argument, an argument at the sink. When you walk away from the sink, let the argument stay there. Right. What happens, what people do, I don't know, like they just love to argue. They have an argument at the sink, and then they take it to the living room, and then they take it to the bedroom, they take it to the backyard. And they say, yeah, I see what that, stop it. Some people just have to bring the argument everywhere. Well, interchange. Interchange. Not, not, and you're going to argue with people. As so, you know, people say, you are mad at that. We were in we were, we were a uh, radio home in Hayward. We had about 20 men living with us. 20 men, maybe more. How many homes? 28 maybe? One more time? We had a big house. But still 28 men living with us. And so one time I'm there sharing like something about this, not quite the message, but I was talking about it. And one guy said, well, God's good. Yeah. But you and Deborah, you and your, your wife, maybe, you never heard you. I like it. What? Are you kidding? <laughs> I go, man, you got to go back to home. <laughs> we didn't learn nothing over there. Uh, we just learned how to argue like this. <laughs> Nobody heard it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we left the room, the argument stood in the room. We didn't have time to bring the argument outside the room. We had 28 men to work with. To, to encourage them to cry. We couldn't be arguing all over the kitchen and living room the bathroom. No, no. It stood right there. <laughs> right? And then we walk out the door and we have to go do our ministry. Some people have that kind of uh, understanding. They want to argue here. And then, you know what? I'll make sure you suffer. You're going to suffer. I'm going to And he's all you wrong. <laughs> Time for some interchange. See, when, you, when you're following God, you have that interchange. God can change you. And he'll, if you understand this, he'll take you to a point where you become intimate. See, in a world of mistrust, if you find someone
to share your innermost feelings without a sense of regret. Your friends. Intimacy. Deep friends are intimate. For one to share their innermost feelings without confidence. Not worry. You know, I have found when you have a good marriage, intimacy brings a sense of security. Intimate. Right? I don't have to worry about it. Oh, we have our, our spats, and we go, we have our arguments, and then my wife will like, she's too long. <laughs> but knowing that we're intimate, and we're good friends, we're going to send us to you. Amen? But you about that, that you can make a mistake. I can argue and be wrong, and it ain't going to be held against me for the next 2,000 years. The ladies don't forget. They have like bionic brains. Oh, you remember? You remember? When? 1987. April 4th, 1982. And 45 seconds. You said this. I tell you, man, it's like, wow. If we could harness that power, we could take the world! <laughs> but when you can, when, when you can just feel accepted, you know, wow, you can get a security there. You feel good. Not only that, those kind of friendships, they, they build a spiritual growth. Going and crying with one another person is the basis for, for a long, strong friendship. A great relationship because you're going together. The, the bird right here of a feather that flock together have learned about Jesus together. Wow. What a glue that keeps you growing. Huh? Intimate friends are on the same breed or, or on the same breed. Right? Like I said, you don't you don't you don't see eagles flying around in the afternoon turkey in the middle. I'm just trying to think about it. Now, you need to go back and find a turkey like you, man, or change. You, 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 you skipped a couple of things. You forgot the interchange. You forgot the iron sharp of iron. You forgot the forgiveness. You forgot all those stuff that we, could work for eagles now. We learned it. Here's to the turkey. Maybe, we'll talk to the ducks. They might take you closer to the duck than the eagle. Well, somebody. So we build wide, wide friendships when, when, when we share those deep mutual concerns. That's how you build them. You have to have somebody in common. And I'm not talking about stuff, oh, oh, I love football. Camping, look, camping. I'm skiing, I'm skiing. Right? You know, those, those are meaningless activities. They, 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 they occupy valuable time. Why do they just focus on something bigger than themselves? They're focused on something big. Right? When you when you find a friend who's gonna devote himself to something bigger than himself, now you found something. If you're just a partner because you're not going to a baseball game, listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing, I'm gonna be mad at this. But those baseball players don't even know who you are. Did you know that? You know all of them. Well, that's second base. Batting 302. Uh, Part of the universe, and you know what they think, oh yeah, that's a big man. Oh, I know, yeah. You know, they don't know you, they don't know you from Jack or Jim. <laughs> Spend time with take, take some of that time, just a little bit of it. You spend it with somebody. Go with that. Now, I'm not against sports, I like sports. Some people, you know, they go with that. Time is valuable, or fresh for you. It is the most precious commodity you have. Money, you think money's not valuable, but you can always make money. That's right, you can make money. Money's not a value. Time is more valuable, but you can never make money. Once time is spent, it is gone forever. Money is spent, you can make more money. You can never make more money. Yeah, right. What do you spend? Why relationships? They focus on things that are great. 
focus on meeting. In fact, when you begin to focus on meeting each other's needs, now you're really building a relationship. You're thinking about the person in front of you. What, you, what, what how can I help? How can I help her? You're actually willing to risk pain. Because that's the truth. Not every moment with a buddy is going to be fun. It shouldn't be. Remember, the fire truck time. You're going to have to have those those pain periods I call them. There will be times that you just might, might want to beat each other up. Right? You know, yeah, I, you know, I came from, I was the youngest of, 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 of six brothers and sisters. But, you know, and they were always, you know, they were like five years older than me in the next one. And I, I would dream of being you know, like <laughs> Couldn't never do it until I got older when I was a kid. But when you're when you're nine and they're they're fourteen, you just that's a dream that's far fetched. But then you do it with brothers and sisters, right? What well, you got to expect that when you're developing a plan. There'll be some time where you're just not gonna feel like you're like. But we're not talking about feelings here. We're talking about really a commitment to each other for a long haul, intimate friends. Are you willing to serve that person? Service is a fruit of obedience. But listen, but before, because people want to serve God, and I want to serve Jesus, and that sounds good, it's a great cliche, everybody says it, but listen, before you can truly serve God, you have to never serve each other. If you can't serve each other, you can never serve God. You know, if you never say never, I just said it, I'll say it again. If you can't serve each other, Proverbs 15.5, a fool spurns his father's discipline, 
But where we need correction shows prudence. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod of correction imparts wisdom. But a child left in himself disgraces his mother. Never ever wonder why his mother not father. I wish I had more time to elaborate. Maybe next. As we close. When you're developing a great relationship in church with other people, your love should be oftentimes sacrificial. It's not going to be comfortable sometimes for you to be a friend. It won't be the most opportune time to, to be a friend. But we shouldn't let that hinder us from being those types of people. Right? See, once we love with the expectation of getting something in return, we become self-serving and we do more virtue. But when you just love, regardless of what you give back, sacrificial, then you spread the virtue. It should be a tip of life. If you hear, oh no, I do this for you, that should be a warning sign to you that you fit the wrong person. But if they expect something tip of time, you're, you're, you're not in the right route. Or a warning sign where you gotta say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the type of friendship we're having. We need, we need to adjust this right here. But just because you did something for me, you shouldn't. That, 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 you're putting too much on me. You're raising that expectation that's unfair. Uh, so these, these are warning signals. Then you gotta be evaluating, wait a minute, okay, wait a minute. I, maybe I didn't. Maybe, I didn't. <laughs> maybe you did, maybe you did. Or maybe at the time God is using you teach them because they, if they accept the criticism and stop them and apologize to you on the right or wrong, then you can go back. That's how that works. We have to be open and apparent, rather open and transparent. Right? Jesus is, hey, you're my friend if you do what I command, but I no longer call you, I mean, you're my servant, brother, if you do what I command, but I no longer call you a servant. I'm going to call you my friend, but because, because I'm telling you everything I know. And only a friend reveals everything they know is transparent. Jesus says that to his disciples. Why? Because he's modeling how we need to be with good friends, open and transparent. I, I, I've heard people that, well, you know, I, I heard this, I mean, in real life, I've seen this guy's girlfriend another guy. I don't want to hurt him because he's my friend. That's not a friend, that's the devil. Because if that, if that person will say, I don't want to hurt you, a friend, and let a transgression be done to you, continue. Do you call that a friend? Friends are open and transparent. They say, I don't want to hurt them. I really don't. That's my friend. I gotta let this happen. I gotta be open and transparent. I know this. And I cannot walk around him knowing that I know something about him that others know that I'm not telling him. That, wow. But the world says, well, that's what you should be if you want to keep your friend. Mm. I told you to get me part of the nature. Last week, I thank you. Really good, strong friends. We need to be able to ask for forgiveness. Be forgiven. I think this is the capstone of all of it. If we can do all those other things, you're going to have time where it's just going to hurt. You're going to feel wrong. But this is the capstone. And I have to give forgiveness. Without that, I'll be ready for the rest of us to get a call. Again, I think in America, there's two people close together. It's not for the simple fact of being forgiving and getting forgiveness. I would say all marriages. Well, the model of friendship, 
not just in earth, but in daily life activity. In church, these are things that we have to work with. We're really going to be those people that are not just looking at what God is doing, but, but doing what God wants you to do. Uh, Joel, you say, ministry would be easy if it weren't for people. Right? But you can plainly see the world of people Thank you. 